Leaders' questions. Call on Deputy O'Keeve. Concord, just about the boil on Rogal Ozer and Gumai Kestini Gunshanra on an interesting fast. I'd like to welcome the introduction of this session of Leaders' questions, and I hope that the Tarnishers' replies to my questions will be clear and concise. I know. Sorry, could we get on with the question, please? Thank you. I so, sorry. I, I note the decision by the government yesterday to sell the final 25% of Erlingus and 25% of DSB. And does the sale of the final 25% of Erlingus not once again prove, despite the assurances we were given when the partial sale of Kolok Shukra Eden took place and of Erlingus? that once you go down the route of selling off parts of state companies, you're going down an inexorable route towards the total privatisation in time. That you look after Mallow Hospital now, Mr Sherlock. You sold out of Mallow Hospital. Would you, would you please, would you please, would you allow the deputy make his point, please? Would they tarnish to further agree that the sale of <laughs> would the tarnish to not agree that the sale of even 25 percent of the ESP will change the whole nature of the company from being a company that operates in the national interest to one that operates in the narrow interest of the financial return to shareholders? Uh, and I would appreciate if you could maybe just outline the thinking of the government. Uh, of realising money from state assets in this particular fashion. Thank you, Deputy. Honest. Uh, well, good morning, Don Chakta, August Don Falcha, Riv, Keshtana, Nagalari, are on Jerdian. Uh, I'm very happy, Can uh, Corla, to give uh, the Deputy uh, clear and concise answers, and I hope in return that the questions will equally be clear and concise. <laughs> Uh, the Deputy has asked me to respond to the decision that he claims the Government has made to sell the remaining share in Aer Lingus. No such decision has been made by the Government. Uh, secondly, he has asked me to um, respond to what he says is a decision made by the Government to sell 25% of um, uh, the ESB. Uh, no decision has been made in respect of the percentage uh, of the shareholding in the ESB which is to be sold. Uh, what the government has done is it has looked at uh, the um, requirement and the necessity uh, for the sale of some state assets uh, in order to deal with the financial circumstances that the country has been put in and secondly, and secondly uh, to raise uh, money for investment uh, in job creation. The government's decision in respect of the ESB is to sell a minority shareholding uh, in the ESB, that the ESB will not be broken up, as has been advocated, and I heard somebody this morning uh, on a radio programme advocating that course of action, the ESB will not be broken up, the ESB will be retained as a single entity, and that is being done in the, uh, in the national interest. Uh, a decision has been made by the government that a minority shareholding in the ESB will be sold. The manner in which uh, that sale will take place, the amount of the shareholding which will be sold, uh, the issue of finding a uh, compa compatible uh, investor uh, for the uh, ESB are matters that will be taken forward by both the Minister for Communications, Energy and Natural Resources and the Minister for Public Expenditure uh, and Reform, and they will report back uh, to government on those matters by the end of November. Thank you, Tarnished Deputy. One minute. Um, can I take it from the Tarnished that, that up to 49 per cent of DSP might be sold? And the second question could you clarify? Are you saying that the transmission assets, which are the main power cables and as well as the network, which is the one that brings it to the domestic dwellings and so on, that they will not necessarily be retained in 100 per cent state ownership? and that you're not going to transfer those to Airgrid. Can you also confirm that the transmission system in Northern Ireland that, has been, that is owned by DSP, 
uh, will that be retained in 100% state ownership, or are we doing something that I think every government had set to now had set its face against, and that is selling any or any dilution in 100% ownership of the actual wires of the electricity system, and that was a decision that had been made by the previous government. Could, I, could, I, could you also confirm whether you're going to accept or reject the McCarthy report uh, proposal to uh, transfer the hydroelectric schemes, including Turlock Hill, to Airgrid so that they would be retained in 100% state ownership because of their importance? And could you tell us if these are being transferred out of the ESP, has a valuation been put on the residual value of the ESP if all of these absolutely vital national assets are retained in 100% state ownership, what would the value of the ESP without these assets? Well, I think it's worth reminding the Deputy that, of course, we're in this situation where the sale of state assets has to be considered by this government because of the hole that uh, your uh, government put this, put this, put this country into, and we have, and we have renegotiated. We have renegotiated. You know, and, and we have, and we have, and we have. Sorry, sorry. We have, uh, we have renegotiated it, and you know, I think it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit remiss. I think it's a little bit remiss of, uh, of. Uh, I think it's a little bit remiss of the the parties opposite not to have at least acknowledged the success that the government has had in getting the interest rate down, something that for the, from the time the government was done, formed last March, you yeah, constantly yeah. told us, couldn't be done. you constantly you told us that it couldn't be done, that it wouldn't be done, and it was done, it was done in terms which were far excess of what you, of what you, of what you said was possible. You. Now in relation, in relation, time is up. In, Thank you. in relation, in relation to the in relation, We're over in, time. in relation to the uh, in relation to the ESB, the reason that the government uh, has made the decision to sell a minority share in the ESB is because it is necessary to do so in order to deal with the financial problems we have and in order to generate uh, funding for job creation. You cannot take it, as you have said, that 49% will be sold. There is already a minority. There is a. Oh, there is already a minority shareholding in the ESB, which is held by the staff of the, the company. And as I've said, as I've said earlier to you, we are not going to break up uh, the ESB. And I note that you seem to be heading down that uh, line of thinking yourself. There is going to be no breaking up of the ESB. It will re remain a single entity, which is what is in the national interest. It will be in state control. There will be a minority shareholding, which will be sold, uh, and with the proceeds from which uh, the government in intends to use to generate uh, funds for employment in order to get this economy Thank to Thank you, Honister. Deputy Gerry Adams. Well, Honister, near core, Ian Hodge done the ESB a year. Over Shin and the Major Dirt, Parchy and Lockdabra, and Tehon. Over Ta and ESB no board, Solaher, Electricus, Egyanov, Brabus, more than Lena. And the Sugars Bacor, an honoured Ian Hodge Yale Bacor, and Brabus Shaw, a Husad, La Jabana, a Kroho. Yesterday I appealed to the Taoiseach to stop giving money away to banks and to invest it into jobs. And since then we've heard the possibility of 420 other job losses in Dublin. And yesterday, in the first day back, after a question from Deputy uh, for us, the government admits the plan to sell off part of the ESP. Tanishta, I want to remind you of what you said during the election. Labour is committed to the concept of public enterprise, is opposed to short termist privatisation of key state assets such as Keelsha or the energy networks. You also said when these chaps sold off Aircom, you called it a debacle and you described it as a company being sold and bought like a clapped out second hand car. Now surely if there's any purpose in parching the luck Deborah being in government with Fine Gael, it's to prevent this type of approach. And would I appeal to you to consider this position and to stand up for the rights of working people and to oppose this sell off. Thank you, Deputy Thornister. Um, well can I first of all remind Deputy Adams that um, his party has made its own unique contribution 
to the difficulty that the country is in and the, the circumstances that this government uh, inherited it last March. The reason, Deputy Adams, that there's money being paid to the banks is because the state provided a guarantee to the banks and your party supported that. And what we are now, what we are now doing, Deputy Adams, what we are... Please, thank you. Have some order, please. You know, you have to remember. You have to. You have to remember that when you give a guarantee, uh, you have to. You have to. You have to honour it. Now, this, this country, this country, this country is in an economic difficulty, and this government, this government is going to get this country out of that economic difficulty. And all of the decisions, all of the decisions that we have taken to date in the first six months of the life of this government has set this country back on the road to recovery. If you look, if you look, if you look, if you look, if you look at where, if you look at, if you look at the circumstances that this country was in when we uh, formed this government, and you look, for example, uh, and, you look at the, and you look at the progress that has been made, the renegotiation of the deal with the EU and the IMF, the reduction in the interest rates, uh, the uh, jobs initiative that we have taken, the, the various decisions, the various initiatives, the various initiatives that this government has taken to, to bring about economic recovery. Now, in an ideal world, Deputy Adams, we wouldn't want to be selling the ESB or any state asset. We're not in an ideal world. We're in a world where this country's economy and its finances are in deep trouble. And this government is going to take the decisions that is going to get us out of that trouble, get people back to work, get our economy moving again, and bring about, bring about recovery. And the decision that we have taken, the decision that we have taken, which is a decision that in the national interest we will remain, retain the ESB intact as a single entity. We will sell a minority shareholding in that. We're not going to do it uh, in, in, a, in a loose kind of way. It is going to be done in a very considered way. And that is why both the Minister for Communications, Energy and Natural Resources and the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform have been tasked with the responsibility of working this through, discussing it with the energy regulator, with the European Commission looking at what is in, looking at the manner in which a minority shareholding can be uh, sold in the best interests of the country, securing the future of the ESB, securing energy security and contributing to investment in this economy that will get people back to work and the economy moving Thank again. You, Deputy Adams, one minute. Thank you. Well, you didn't answer the question, Tonister, and the response all the time from the government and you're ripping Fine Gael on this issue as you're doing every other one, <coughs> is big boys made us do it. I'm wondering respectfully, would you consider, I'm wondering respectfully, would you consider amending the proclamation? Would this be a government initiative? The proclamation says, we declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and the unfettered control of Irish destinies, destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. Maybe amend it unless Unless the big bankers, unless the Golden Circle, unless the EU or the IMF or Fine Gael dictate otherwise. Now, the question, Tanishta, for, for yourself, and I address you as Tanishta, representing the government, also as leader of the Labour Party. What type of society will be left when we've sold off not just our natural resources, which Pat Rabbit has already uh, expedited, but also in terms of these key assets, you know, when we have no public postal service, when we have a, a, ho a whole range of other necessary uh, energy, uh, We're over time. public energy bodies, no forestry body, what type of society, what are the social consequences? And again, I would, again, I would ask you again to reconsider this decision and to stand firmly on the need to use the dividends from these profitable uh, state assets to grow, grow, grow jobs as opposed to selling them off like a clapped out car. Thank you. Tarnished in one minute. Well, first of all, um, first of all, the big boys didn't make us do it. The government is perfectly capable 
of making its decision and standing over it and taking responsibility, uh, taking responsibility uh, for that. I am very much aware of what is in the uh, proclamation. I know it very well. And the problem that we have, and the problem that this country has, Deputy, is that when we took office, this country had lost its economic sovereignty. And what, and what, and, and what this government is doing, and what we will have done, well done, by the 100th anniversary of the 1916 Rising, is we will have restored this country's sovereignty again, and we will have people back to work, and we will have a good economy, and we will have a better and a fairer society. But the question, the question is this, Deputy Adams. What kind of society do you think we would have in this country if we followed your prescription, defaulted on the debt? Where do you think we were going to get the 18, 19 billion euro that is required to pay for services, to pay the teachers in our schools, to pay for social welfare payments, to pay for all of the things that every day that you come in here and rightly say that, that, we, should, uh, that we should have? This government is going to restore this country's and is restoring this country's economic sovereignty. The steps that we are taking is going to get us out of the economic difficulty that we are in. Some of the decisions that we have to make and are making are difficult decisions. We're making them, we're going to make them, and we're going to do what Thank is necessary honesty. in order to restore this country's fortunes. Deputy Shane Ross, on behalf of the technical group. Certainly did something right to the ESB when it restricted the pay of its chief executive and it capped semi-state bodies pay in, uh, in the last session. I wonder, with that in mind, whether the Tornister could answer this for me. You know, people with private pensions, as the Tornister will be aware, are up in arms about the fact that the government has put a, put a levy on their pensions and plundered their pension funds. And nowhere was it more evident than last week when salt was poured into the wounds of these pensioners when Mr Dermot McCarthy, the secretary to the government, was given a 700,000 payoff and a pension that would make a banker blush. It was an extraordinary situation that the person who sat beside all the cabinet at a time when the government was preaching austerity was given 700,000 to go away at the age of 57. And we now have a situation and I'd be interested in the, in the Tornister's response to this, where bankers and people in private industry are paid vast sums for failure. And people in the, at the top of the public service, not people in middle ranks, people at the top of the public service, are paid money to go away early, for desertion, in effect, when apparently if they're so good at their job, they should be incentivized to stay on. It is absolutely unacceptable that this sort of thing should continue. It's a, it's a deal, it's a package, which puts the deal given to Patrick Neary and indeed to the Governor of the Central Bank, John Hurley, it puts his deal, both those deals, in the shade. And I don't think it's acceptable for the government simply to say, look, there is very little that we can do. An element of that, an element of that package which Mr McCarthy walked away with was tax-free. And yet small taxpayers are being asked to pay more in their pensions. So would the, would the, would the minister, would the Tornish to please give me an assurance that there is no other such pension or such payment in the pipeline? I think there is one. Thank you, Deputy. At least one. Uh, that it, there is a tax-free element in this, that it will never happen again, and that they will take measures to ensure that those sort of bonuses and those sort of payoffs are taxed at the same rate that bankers' bonuses were rightly taxed in an emergency measure you, taken by the last Minister for Finance. Minister. Yes, I can give the Deputy an assurance that the Government um, will put an end uh, to uh, the very high level of severance payments, uh, one of which he uh, has referred to. I understand that that particular uh, severance payment uh, was agreed to and signed off uh, by uh, the last government. There are a number of elements to it. Uh, firstly, uh, the government has already uh, capped the salaries of top people in the civil service, and after the 29th of February, uh, that uh, uh, cap on salaries uh, will also apply uh, to uh, pensions. 
Secondly, uh, the Minister for Public uh, uh, Expenditure and Reform uh, is introducing new pensions legislation uh, in respect of the, uh, of the public service, uh, which will address many of the issues that have been raised uh, by Deputy Ross. And thirdly, one of the elements uh, which was in the package that he referred to was an agreement or an arrangement that was agreed back in, I think, 1987. When the change was made, there was a change made at that stage. Prior to that, Secretaries General were appointed for life. And in 1987, that was changed uh, to an arrangement whereby there were seven-year contracts. And I understand that there was a separate severance arrangement uh, agreed at that time that where Secretaries General retired after the seven-year period, uh, that there was a, severance, uh, a separate severance element to it, which I understand applied in, in, this, in this case. The Minister for Public uh, Expenditure and Reform uh, is um, looking at that arrangement with a view to putting an end to it. I, I accept the, uh, that the Government is going to do something about this in the future. I suggest they are not enough. I suggest, and maybe the Tornister can answer two supplementaries on this very quickly. Should he not, in the light of what has happened, abolish lump sums at the top of the civil service? They should just go. Could he give us an assurance? There will be none. This business of capping at 60,000 is completely unacceptable. There should be none. There is no excuse for giving people lump sums at the time, that, at the time of austerity like uh, that the, the, the we're now suffering from. And the second is this, if you could give me this assurance. Would he join with me then in asking, if he can't do anything at the moment, and I doubt that, but in asking, and I specifically, Mr McCarthy to hand back that money because he's on such an enormous salary, uh, pension. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, well, first of all, again, I think it's important that we um, disaggregate some of, these, some of these issues. As I've said, uh, the special severance arrangement, uh, the Minister for Public um, Expenditure and Reform, uh, is uh, looking at that uh, arrangement, reviewing that with a view to, to putting that uh, to an end. There is a, a, the, the, the issue of uh, the lump sum uh, which is part of uh, the pension uh, arrangements that people have. That's, I think, a separate matter and arises from the, uh, from the pension, uh, from the pension uh, entitlements. Uh, as I've said earlier, the levels of pension which are paid, uh, that will now, because of the capping, of the salaries uh, concerned, that is going to um, be uh, reduced as a consequence uh, of that, and uh, there will be new legislation dealing with uh, um, uh, dealing with pensions in the in the public service. Thank you.